Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about your resume and how this can be the difference between landing the perfect job of your dreams versus just a regular job. Um, this is mostly for the software developer slash software engineer space, but uh, to be honest, this resume advice could apply to whatever field you're in or whatever field you want to go into. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So basically, let's start off with from the top. Okay, so I have a rule of thumb and that is if you have less than 10 years of experience, your resume should be less, it should be only one page or less. Okay. If you have less than 10 years of experience, one page. Over 10 years, you can make multiple pages. Also, if you don't have a PhD and a PhD kind of adds to it. If you have a PhD, you can have multiple pages, but if you don't have a PhD, and especially if you have less than 10 years of experience, single page, because think about the recruiters, right? They are having to go through multiple resumes, thousands of resumes, right? They're just gonna skip past it, okay? So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first section of your re resume, okay, is what I call the header, okay? And this consists of your name, right here, your name, and your contact information, okay? In this case, I have phone number. This is obviously a fake phone number, so if you're trying to reach me with this, it's not gonna go through, so don't even try. Uh, email address, and possibly a website or LinkedIn profile or YouTube profile, just whatever showcases what you do and also applies to the job you're applying for. Okay, so that's the first section. I call it the header. Okay, mostly contact info. Then we go on to the next section, which I call the summary. Okay, this is section two. So we call this section two. Section two. So section two should just be two to three sentences long and it's pretty much just a profile say hey this is who i am this is what i can do this is what i want okay again who i am what i can do what i want and mine mine reads hey a computer slash electrical engineer with thirst for knowledge and a desire to excel seeking an engineering position at whatever so if you're applying to google you put google in there facebook put facebook palantir palantir tesla whatever okay then i go on i say Backed by four years of technical software programming experience and a master's degree, I could be a potential asset. So you see who I am, what I want, and what I can do. That's it. Then we go on to the next section. The next section is what I call work experience, obviously. In this case, I decided to put the word engineering just to be more specific, uh, but it's just work experience. And, and you want to start from most recent or most relevant first, and then go down. It should obviously be in chronological order. Okay, I like most recent. So currently I'm a senior software engineer with Intel. Um, like I said, I put the role, team name, okay, and also the date and location. This is because most companies um, know you might want to relocate and they have to plan accordingly. Okay, so hey, I started this job in May and I'm still working there right now. And it's okay if you are not currently employed and then you're going to have to put in your previous experience. But again, it has to be relevant to the job you're applying for, and it has to be in chronological order. Okay. Then for each experience you put that, I like to, again, it depends. It's different if you're just a guy graduating college or you're an intern trying to get an internship, but still a college student trying to get an internship. But I try to put three to five bullet points for each experience. For instance, for my software engineering role with Intel, my first point says, develop machine learning based algorithms and models for image analysis frameworks and semiconductor testing. Okay, and you always want to make sure the keywords stand out. This keyword in this point is machine learning. I'm letting them know I have some experience with machine learning and our algorithms. I'm also letting them know I, know I have some image analysis work um, experience. Okay, and I also work with semi semiconductors right? and testing. The next bullet point said debug the triage triage software bugs in Python and C++. So I'm letting them know, hey, I can debug. I've used Python and C sharp. I'm sorry, not C++. And I can also do some testing and validating. Okay, that's what the second bullet point is showing. A third bullet point is showing I'm a people's person. It says work with stakeholders to communicate technical specifications of software requirements and integrity. So it's letting them know, hey, I have some people skills, right? I can work with stakeholders, I can work with customers, even though I'm technical, but I can work with people too, right? So that's the third bullet point. And then if you have multiple experiences, go on and add them. If you don't, if you're still a younger person, just starting out, 
you probably have some projects you did in college. Here's where you want to put those projects down and be detailed as possible. Again, you're going for one page, single page. Okay. So then I go on to my next experience. My next experience is with a company called, was with a company called Commons Inc. I worked there from August of 2017, so it was right after <clears throat> I graduated college with my master's till April of 2021. Okay. I stayed there and I stayed the location of where I was. To be honest, you don't really have to stay the location because uh, it doesn't matter. You're not there right now, but it helps. Okay. Again, just like the previous experience, I say my role and my team. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Then I go on bullet points. I said, first bullet point is maintain Python and Perl scripts to analyze data and optimize software execution timing and frame balance. Okay. Keywords here, Python and Perl. I'm letting them know I have some experience with this. Okay. Analyze data, data analysis. I'm letting them know I have some experience with this too. Okay. Next bullet point says integrated and tested C slash C plus plus software for the ECM for various engine platforms. Again, okay. this actually this resume was created for Tesla. I created it to apply for Tesla, which I'm currently in the hiring process for Tesla right now. It's it, it's it's pretty I, I picked up my skills and elaborated on them in such a way it applies to Tesla as a car manufacturer and also an energy company. Okay. So next, so in this bullet point, I'm highlighting C slash C plus plus, knowing I have some experience with firmware stuff. And also I work with ECMs of vehicles, right? Tesla likes that shit. Okay. So I go on and I say, hey, I developed and tested algorithms to ensure efficient memory optimization and for various memory regions like flash, cache, blah, blah, blah. Just on the big, I can develop and test algorithms. And the last one is just, hey, I can prepare tests and run tests if you guys need me to do that. You know, that's all I'm saying. And I go on to my internship, which is my previous experience. Okay. Still with the same company. Again, I'm not going to read out the bullet points, but I'm just going to quickly say, hey, I'm telling them I have experience with HTML and JavaScript. I'm telling them, hey, I also work on creating some help documents for the company, which is not, is, I was an intern, so it's not the biggest or most significant role, to be honest. Uh, so I go on and say, hey, I have experience with coding and automation of tasks in Visual Basic and um, Visual VBA. I think it's Visual Basic application. It's been a while since I used it, but in VBA, I can automate tasks with my pros and stuff in VBA. And also companies like this last one, this last one. Hey, I've dealt with source control, okay? And with um, version control and source management, source code management using Git. Git is the most common one, but um, some companies I've worked with have used IBM, Rational Clear Case, and PTC Integrity. So, you know, the robot. I'm just letting them know, hey, I know how source control works when it comes to code. Then I go on to my master's, okay? I talk about my master's degree and my research. If you have research, you want to list your research. So I tell them, hey, keywords in my, in my first bullet point is machine learning, okay? Based on algorithms, okay? And state of charge, state of health, okay? Again, like I said, this was specifically written for Tesla. Tesla deals with a lot of batteries, as you can tell. State of charge, state of health sounds really sexy with Tesla, okay? Which is why I'm currently in the process for that. And I'm going to talk about some other optimization algorithms I use in grad school for my research and my thesis. Talk about ant colony, particle swarm, puzzle logic, neural networks. We all know Tesla loves this shit. So you want to structure your resume like this. Again, we go on and I say, hey, I developed and simulated various battery models to account for temperature variations and other parametric conservatives. Again, it's just more adding more sugar, adding more sweets. So Tesla can buy on the sweets. Then once you're done with your work experience slash projects, you want to talk about your education. Okay. In this case, some people like to put GPA. To be honest, GPA doesn't matter as much unless it's super high. My GPA for my master's was super high, was 4.0. My bachelor's was more like 3.7 or something. But, but I didn't put it in there because I have a master's. I don't, I didn't think it mattered. But again, I stayed my master's degree, state of where and when. I stayed my bachelor's degree, where and when. Then here is a section I, I like, your relevant computer experience. Here, you just want to list, state maybe like a list, just, hey, here's the code base I use, here's what I'm used to, here's what I like. Just go ahead and tell them, hey, in this case, I'm listening. C++, you, you want to start with your most, where you're most fluent at, where you're best at. In my case, it's C++ and Python, and I go on. And then the last one, which most people, again, I keep looking down because I have my tablet, I'm using Kirin and I'm writing. Uh, the last one, which most people might not have is research and publication. Okay, I 
have a bunch of publications from masters, um, you want to state them down. So I'm stating, hey, in this IEEE conference, I published this paper. So I'm, I'm letting them know, hey, I have some peer review work out there that counts and I know how to present my work. Okay. So I'll talk about my first paper, I'll talk about my second paper, which was on the transaction, IEEE transaction of vehicular technology, okay, which is a big deal. To be honest, if you know this transaction, you're going to be like, oh man, it's pretty good. Um, each inter I've had several interviews with Tesla, to be honest. And this, this, this stands out to them. Like this paper, they, they, they love it out there. Okay. So yeah, then I go into the next one and say, hey, I have this paper to aging predictions for state of charge, estimation, blah, blah, blah. Just, your, your, just mostly your research or, or fun projects you've done or side projects. So that's pretty much it for my resume. Like I said, I only have four years of experience since my master's. So anything over one page is just excessive. Like I said, unless you have 10 years of experience, you have no business having multiple pages of the resume. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.